The first time I met him was uh, the uh, spring of 1957. Uh, at the time, there was this jazz package show called Jazz for Moderns, and the show had uh, Maynard Ferguson's big band. It had Wayne Shorter playing in it, and uh, Dave Brubeck's quartet, uh, Lambert Hendricks and Ross, and uh, Miles's band. And after the show, they were coming back from New York, Rochester coming to New York, and they missed a ride going to the train station. So I had a car, so I took Miles and Paul and Philly to the train station to get a train coming to New York. Uh, at the time, Miles just said, hello, and can we get a ride going to the train station? Because my father and Paul's father were on the same bus driving line in Detroit, so I did know him some kind of way. And I said, sure. So we got into the car and drove on to the, drove on to the train station downtown Rochester. Uh, I didn't see him again to speak to him until uh, the spring of 1963 uh, when he came into the half note. I was working with a quartet of Jim Hall and Art Farmer and uh, Walter Perkins. And he kind of sn snuck around and looked real mysterious with his cape on. And after the first set, he called me over and, and said that he was putting the band together. Paul had finally left to join and went. And, and Jimmy Cobb to be a trio for West Montgomery. And he was going to California that week to, put a, to finish out the tour, but Jimmy had, had, had agreed to finish the tour that he started. So I said, I'm available, but I'm working with Art Farmer for this week. So what you have to do, you have to ask Art Farmer if, if it's okay if I leave this job, you know? So after the next set, he, Art Farmer talked and uh, Art Farmer agreed that I could leave the band midweek and leave the next day at the Gord Miles out to California. The first gig was uh, at the Blackhawk. That's how I met him.